today to our webinar entitled Connect One, Web Hosted Security and Energy Management. We appreciate that you've taken time out of your busy schedule to be with us and we're going to definitely make it worth your time. Before we get started, just want to uh, give you a couple of other pieces of information. We do monthly webinars. We do a basics webinar at M1 Basics every month. It's usually the second Friday of each month. If you're on this webinar, you may not need the basics, but you may have some others in your organization that um, need that information. So those are always listed on our website. And then we also try to do an advanced webinar each month as well. Those come out in our newsletter and once again they're on our website. So we would love to have you in future webinars as well. If you're joining us to, um, I was going to say, in our, if you want to go on the website or if you can't see some of the webinars, we keep them recorded and they're on our website for you to watch as well. My name is Beth Carter and I'm going to be helping just facilitate the webinar today and, and help uh, handle some of our questions. Our panelists today are, uh, we've got several, we've got Amy Strickland who is uh, with Elk Products and she's in our tech support department. If you've ever called in and needed help, you may have talked to Amy and she is one of our resident um, M1 experts. We also have joining us today Mike and Dan Simon who are with Connected Technology and they're the ones who have created Connect One, and so we're definitely going to welcome Dan and Mike. You know, we're here at Elk, we're always looking for partners who can help us help our customers expand their market share, and so that's why we're very excited to introduce you to Connect One. As we um, start into the webinar, if you do have questions during the session, we would ask that you just type those into the um, question box, and we're going to answer as many of those as we can throughout the presentation. If we don't get to them, we'll try to do um, more at the end, and then we'll also be doing a follow-up. If you'd like a copy of the presentation, we do send that out after the webinar as well. And like I said, we do record it, and it will be on our website as well. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Amy Strickland. She's going to start for us, and then she will turn it over to Dan and Mike Simon. So welcome you, Amy. Thank you, Beth. Um, I want to take just a couple minutes here at the beginning of the presentation to talk to you a little bit about M1 Cloud. Um, M1 Cloud is the um, optional service that works in conjunction with a third-party service provider like Connect One to allow access to the M1 system from outside, inside or outside the home or business. Um, so this process kind of eliminates some of the uh, complicated network setup that you run into. Um, so that's uh, always a, a benefit when we make things less complicated. The uh, image on the screen now is just giving you a, a basic idea of how M1 Cloud works. Um, we've got the M1 system uh, that's connected to a network using the M1 XCP. Um, then you've got uh, your devices. That could be a, a computer, a smartphone, um, any number of devices that your end user may want to use to connect to their system. And that all happens through M1 Cloud. Um, so that um, you know, can, allows the connection from the M1 system um, through these devices to uh, you know, arm, disarm the system, do uh, any number of things, check system status, that sort of thing. That's all, all that information is coming from the M1 cloud. I just want to talk briefly about the benefits of M1 cloud and, and Connect One. Um, Mike and Dan will go into a lot more detail on that, but just want to hit some points here on on why you would want to offer a service like this. Um, this allows user management for the end user. So um, with the M1 system now, without something like Connect One, you know, we, we can only manage users through the LCRP software, which is the software you use to program the system. And you may not want to give that to your customer for you know, obvious reasons, making sure that the, they don't somehow disable the security system or make it not work the way it's supposed to. Um, so this allows you to do some of that user management without those uh, risks. And um, it offers expanded email notification. Um, the M1 XCP can send up to you know, 16 different email notifications, but that's kind of limiting. So um, if you're you know, interested in expanded e email notifications, this will be a great option for you. Um, you can log in and control the system from virtually any web-enabled device, so you, you don't have to worry about, you know, platforms. Is it Windows? Is it Mac? You know, is it an Android or an iPad? That, that kind of thing is not going to be a concern for you. If it's web-enabled, you should be able to get to it with that. Um, you can have unlimited event storage. Um, the M1 has a 512 event uh, memory buffer built into it. 
um, certain applications that can be somewhat limiting, especially if you're looking at like access control or a bigger system. And as I mentioned before, the network setup is going to be a lot simpler for you. So those are just some benefits. And uh, again, Mike and Dan will go into more detail on some of those here in just a moment. Did want to go quickly um, over a, this is um, some technical information for you. Um, in order to use the M1 Cloud and the Connect1 service, you do need to update the M1 XCP Ethernet interface to a new version of firmware. It'll be a 2.0 version or later. And this is an irreversible update. So this is not an update that you want to apply to every system you have. Only if you are going to be using the M1 Cloud services should this update be applied. So that's just something we want to point out to you. As you get into the process of setting one of these up, um, you, you know, contact Connect One, set up an account with them, and they're going to ask you for your uh, M1 Cloud account ID. That is something that you can obtain through the LCRP software. You go to the Setup menu and click on M1 Cloud while you're connected with LCRP through the M1 XCP and also have an internet connection on the computer. Um, you can obtain an account ID and then provide that to Connect One. You only want to do that after you've already contacted them and set up the account with them. They'll let you know when you need that. Um, so those are just some points that we wanted to hit um, before we started uh, hearing more about Connect One from Mike. So Mike, I'm going to hand it over to you now. Okay, thank you very much. I uh, want to welcome everybody to uh, this uh, webinar and I want to uh, thank Elk uh, for the opportunity to uh, talk to the dealers uh, in regards to Connect One. Uh, a little bit about us, uh, I'm Mike Simon, and um, uh, I'm pretty much a, a revolved, my, my job revolves around marketing and, and helping uh, dealers with uh, sales applications and uh, how, to, uh, how to promote and sell uh, the uh, web-enabled service Connect One. Uh, Dan is the technical guy, and if you have any questions at all in regards to uh, Anything with Connect One or how it's set up with uh, with Elk, uh, Dan would be the person you'd be talking to. So uh, basically, what is Connect One? Uh, Connect One is a web-hosted service offering the end user management of their security, access control, lighting, video, uh, um, energy management through uh, HVAC system that uh, will generate recurring revenue for you guys, the dealer. And um, it's through one, through one secure login by your end user, uh, the web host, uh, hosted service allows for fast and easy management of all their locations, systems, and personnel from any web-enabled device. Uh, unlike some other products that may require uh, software to be installed and uh, can be difficult to configure on the end user's network, there's no software that's necessary uh, for the, the Connect One service, uh, basically, you know, we like to call plug and play. So um, there, there's nothing that has to be done at the at the uh, customer site, which makes it a lot more comfortable for the customer and their IT department and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, we uh, solely market Connect One to integration dealers. We do not we do not sell to the end user. We go through you guys. Um, end users subscribe directly through the uh, the dealer network through you guys, and um, we brand everything with your name and logo. We want we want this to look like your service that you're offering to the customer. We don't want it, we don't get in the middle of uh, the relationship at all. We'll help you with the end user, but as far as questioning questions and things like that, we we like that to go through the the uh, the dealer. Um, the uh, end user web interface and marketing materials, all, like I said, are all branded with your name and logo. We give you marketing materials also to work with, and we uh, give you the artwork all branded. And we hope that Connect One uh, opens up new doors of opportunities uh, for you guys in uh, in, in different uh, markets. So maybe some of the markets that uh, you'd like to be using the Elf products with, and, and uh, uh, maybe. Uh, 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 you know, we can hope help to uh, to help standardize and use the uh, Elk M1 panel in more applications than maybe what you're presently using it for. Okay, next screen here. Hi, uh, this is Dan Simon. 
Um, this basically, how, how does Connect One help you as an elk dealer? And uh, first and first, you know, it's about letting your customer easily manage their own system. Now we're, we're providing a service so that um, you, your customers can log in and manage and control their own system so that you don't have to. And um, right off the bat, you know, they can program user codes and access cards very easily, which is um, one thing that's a little bit different about our service. Um, in fact, what we're going through right now, the points I'm making, are, are what's the, the, kind of the differences from what you might be familiar with. Obviously, there's a lot more control that we'll get into as far as being able to uh, remotely control and check statuses and things, but these are some of the differences that, that makes our service a little bit different. Um, so they can program user codes and access cards easily, including batching codes to multiple locations. So if the customer has more than one location, they can easily uh, batch that code or card without having to enter the information more than once. They can get instant daily or weekly email or text messages, but again, and, and, and I know that that's capable presently, but this is a little bit different because the end user can tailor how they want to receive those and they're, they're in control of configuring it. Um, so if they change their email address or want to add someone else to the list, um, they can easily take care of that on their own, as well as be able to get a daily or weekly report instead of maybe needing to know, be notified of, of uh, an access activity right when it occurs. So they have some flexibility for that. Another um, key difference is being able, uh, the customer can set their own thermostat setback schedule. So maybe they, um, you know, they, they used to want the setback at, uh, you know, 70 degrees instead of 75 degrees or whatever it happens to be, they can easily configure that on their own. And by the setback schedules, what I mean is, um, like for instance, when the system gets armed, the thermostats can go into a conservative mode, and when the, the system gets disarmed, thermostats go back into a uh, comfortable mode. Um, they can easily configure what those set points are, again, alleviating you from having to make those changes. Um, ELK has the ability to tie in temperature probes to the zone inputs on the panel, as you're sure you're familiar with. Um, those temperature probes, uh, the customer can receive low and high temperature alarms uh, based on whatever threshold setting they want that to be at, as well as the temperatures can be logged on, a, on an interval. So um, if there's a, a regulatory reason or something like that where they need to prove temperatures were consistent in a given period, they can automatically be logged and then the customer can receive a historical report of that. And then also, we also have a lockdown feature. So in cases when we're talking about access control, they can uh, easily perform a lockdown which can lock all the doors and deactivate certain users. So um, those are some of the differences of what Connect One can offer from what you might be familiar with some of the other tools. Um, powerful in the sense that uh, the same interface that, that you become accustomed with can be used for both residential and commercial, so it's not limited to a certain um, type of application. Uh, there's a full browser and mobile support, and you can also easily support your customers and log into their interface. So if they call you up and have a question about something, your customer support staff can easily log in and see what they're seeing so that um, you can quickly handle their uh, question or concern. Um, when it comes to the installation end, it's installer friendly because like um, Amy pointed out, some of the more complex XEP setup, it, it eliminates the need for that. And um, on top of the XEP setup, it eliminates the need for some of the router and firewall configuration. The only thing you're going to need is an outgoing path to the internet. And most router firewalls already allow that without any change. And then um, there's also no software installation, so it saves time on the installation. Get the panel up and going and you're good to go. Uh, Amy also pointed out about the event storage. Um, you know, you're not limited by the event storage in the panel anymore. We guarantee one year's worth of events and secure off-site storage. So if the customer needs to find out um, something that happened uh, uh, you know, 
few months ago, they can easily do that, and they're not, they don't have to ever worry about if it's there or not. And then with it being scalable, um, you know, the ELK panel has the capability of 16 doors of access control. If you get into larger systems and need to accommodate more doors, you can easily connect more than one control panel, even at the same location, and it doesn't complicate any of the management. To the customer, it's, it's uh, seamless. Well, we're talking about the uh, RMR factor. Um, well, obviously, we you know we we want to generate RMR. That's an important aspect of our business. Uh, also, building and retaining loyal customer base uh, by providing a value-added service that reduces potential attrition. Um, we'll get into this a little bit later. We've been doing this for quite some time now, and the attrition rate has been almost zero uh, with the Connect One customers. Uh, once again, completing installations in less time with greater profit. Um, one of the other things we're going to be talking about, too, we understand what it's like to um, have to load software uh, and, and uh, connect up with the in, in customers' networks and things and, and load software on their servers and that. Uh, if you want to, you know, if you want to lose money, that's the way to do it. Uh, it's, it's, it's difficult at times uh, doing that, uh, loading software. And um, faster training, better retention. Uh, it, it, when you get when we when we start showing you the actual Connect One interface, you'll see it's very familiar, user friendly, and it has that look like the customers uh, are comfortable with that web look and feel. Um, less work and, and more money is kind of our theme here. We have on here some RMR uh, numbers here. Uh, basic, um, you know, what, you, what you'd be looking at for billing, typical pricing of billing the customers. We don't get into, uh, you know, the pricing, whatever you want to charge the customer. We're kind of like uh, the central station. We charge a fee for our services, and whatever you want to charge the customer is up to you. We just, we have some suggested prices, uh, but that's all they are suggested to the end user. Uh, so basically a basic system for the end user to control and manage their burglar alarm system is around $10 a month. Um, when you add a little automation to it, some thermostats and some lighting control, uh, t our, our um, uh, typical pricing for that is $22. That's, that's not us. That would be you charging the end user. And adding uh, access control is around $35 a month. It's kind of a rule of thumb um, from other dealers that are using the service. So you can see it's scalable, which makes it affordable to, uh, you know, to just about everybody. We have, not, um, we have not had any pushback on the pricing as yet. So um, these, these numbers are numbers that people are paying for the service now, and um, so it, the, the numbers work. Just to give you a little background on, on uh, Dan and myself, and um, so you, you understand who you're talking to, um, we founded, uh, not Dan, he wasn't around in 1975, but uh, I founded Stangar back in 1975. We're an installation and service company in the Chicagoland area. Um, then then uh, Dan and I founded uh, Connected Technologies in uh, 2008 and began offering Connect One to security dealers around the country. Presently, we have over 500 systems online, and we're growing on a daily basis. Uh, I think Dan's the guy in the trench down there without the helmet on and the, and the mustache. I'm like kidding. Uh, but, you know, we want you to understand that, that we, we're in the trenches with, the, you know, a typical security dealer. We know what it's like. We're fielding questions, the same questions you guys are fielding on a daily basis. Um, and Connect One has really helped us to service our customers, and uh, they find a lot of value in the service. So, um, you know, we're not some guys that are uh, software writers, or you know, we we uh, we sit at, um, um, at at benches with all this lighting and everything, uh, you know, designing products. Uh, to sell to, to security dealers, we are in the trenches also. Okay, I just want to talk quickly about um, how this, the path 
of information works with Connect One. One thing that we like to point out, kind of pride the design on, is that there is no middleman between you and your central station. Some other competing services, the, 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 the information has to relay onto your central station, and that's not the way this works. Two independent paths. So um, information going to your central station can never be interrupted by any um, anything going on with Connect One. And uh, as Amy pointed out, it does work with the XEP, and um, there, if, if there is no landline, cellular is possible with third-party products, um, taking the XEP and, and sending it out over cellular. And we mentioned before, uh, there's no complex firewall configuring. It only requires an outgoing connection. This is a list of our current product compatibility. Um, obviously, the ELK control panel um, and all of its particular functions being used as burglar, fire, and access, as well as any um, HVAC thermostats and lighting systems. Any of those that are compatible with the ELK panel are compatible with Connect One. Some of the video systems that uh, we have compatibility with, um, there's some DVRs, MVRs, and um, just about any IP camera or encoder. There are some that don't have the availability of a snapshot, which is what we need to integrate the live video, but most are capable, uh, especially if you're talking about any access camera or things like that. And then also the temperature monitoring, any um, elk temperature sensor connected to the zone inputs is uh, compatible. I just want to point out, that's kind of our, our system compatibility, but throughout these slides, we've also had uh, the uh, cap our compatibility of operating systems and browsers and phones. So we do also pride ourselves on the fact that the system is cross-compatible with all the major operating system browsers and phones. And there's, you know, like I said before, a full full browser interface as well as a mobile interface, and uh, both are compatible across the whole line. So you won't get into a situation where your customer has something that uh, they like to use and it doesn't work with Connect One. That won't happen. Hey, Dan, we do um, have a good question. Okay. Uh, the question is, do you have to have, do you have an account minimum to start, or can you start with one and build one at a time? No, um, you can start at one at a time. We have no minimum, um, and and there's no upfront cost. So if you if when you put the um, we only charge for the accounts that you're putting online. So uh, there's, there's no upfront cost. Uh, there's no minimum, and um, I think that answers it, right? Well, and there's also no cancellation fees, and there's and you're not paying for months in advance. You just pay on a monthly basis. So, customer stays on for a month, and for some reason, you lose them. You know, you're not paying for uh, time you weren't they weren't online. And to add to that, um, is there a price break as you get into a larger number of customers? Yes, there is. Yeah, we have different dealer levels, so. As you get to a certain level, your price per um, account would decrease. The um, you know some of the applications that we've talked to other elk dealers about and using. Um, obviously, the residential market is a big market for a lot of elk dealers, and um, we're we were talking to a, a, a gentleman out in California the other day. He's got a customer that has a house in Tahoe and wants to have control of uh, the gates remotely. Um, so there's a lot of things we can do with Connect One where uh, they can open and close gates, get notification of when people are coming to uh, his his home in uh, in Tahoe. Uh, I should mention that uh, the, his um, uh, full-time residence is down in Texas. Uh, so residentially, it, it uh, has a lot of applications, obviously. School districts, we've been talking to health dealers that work with school districts. One of the things that uh, we have multiple buildings uh, typically in school districts, and one of the things that's been a challenge is code changes, logging in, changing the code, logging out, then going to the next school or the next building. Well, with Connect One, uh, it's a simple process of uh, adding or deleting any data, 
checking the boxes uh, where that person will have access uh, to and uh, hitting send command and it's done. So with, uh, with, with, we've, we've taken some of these uh, school districts with their challenge with changing codes for the security system and uh, taking a, a sometimes an all-day project down to a matter of uh, minutes, basically. Uh, Multi-tenant uh, buildings uh, also are, are, are um, another avenue that I think you should look at because with the elk, uh, with the elk panel, you can you know, divide up the, the, um, the suite. Um, you can have individual control of suites and common areas, so management of multi-tenant buildings can manage the common areas, and the tenants in the suites can manage their own um, uh, security in their suite without seeing or affecting any of the other security and data in the other suites. Um, commercial buildings, I would start looking at you know some commercial buildings because we have a lot to offer with the commercial, uh, sort of like the uh, multi-tenant building. But um, um, when there's, we're doing quite a few commercial buildings, especially uh, uh, companies that have multiple locations. Uh, we have one right now we're doing in Illinois, and they also now expanded down into Texas. Well, now the, the, that customer can log in with one login and manage both locations simultaneously. Restaurants, I think the fast food industry is another industry that uh, should be looked at a little bit more carefully in the monitoring and uh, information that we can get with monitoring, like with the probes in the freezers and coolers, making sure that the, they don't keep the doors open too long when they're loading the doors or loading the coolers up with a new product or taking things out so that stuff gets spoiled. And for regulatory reasons, they need to have those, uh, those coolers and freezers monitored, uh, as well as we a lot of these locations, management wants to know if certain doors get opened, um, even if the alarm system is not armed, and we can do that also. For instance, like uh, some of the Burger Kings we've been working on, they want to know if that back door gets opened um, uh, from, uh, because they don't want it open uh, at night. It's an easy way for uh, somebody to break in through that door when they're going out, taking it, we're not even breaking in, but I mean, coming in through that door while they're taking garbage out the back door, for instance. So they want that door closed and locked in the evening hours. And if it gets open, management wants to know about it immediately. So there's just uh, some areas that, uh, that I can help you with. If, you, if you've got any uh, uh, situations where you think Connect One and the M1 uh, has the value for in any of these areas, I can help you as far as what we've done with other dealers and uh, maybe open up those doors of opportunity. Now we come to the point where we want to actually go through a live demonstration of the product. I'm going to switch over to the browser that we have running here. What you're looking at right now is the login screen that your customer would go to to log into their account. Well, we like to point out, and we mentioned before, but this is your service. The login is clean, no advertising, promoting other things that you may not care your customer to see. So this is the way it will always look, not confusing. Uh, however, we actually recommend that you log in directly from, or you let your customers log in directly from your website. And we can provide uh, your web developer with the sample code to do that. It's very simple. And then you can promote your other services and anything else you want to um, give to your customer. Once they log in, They'll come to what we call the main menu, and there's different boxes here of the different sections they can come to. Again, we point out on the top left, we have a generic Your Company logo here. That's your dealer name and logo. So that remains there throughout the entire um, software, and you're, so you're completely branded with your image. You can also uh, customize the color scheme as well, so to match your logo better. Dan, can you also, there was a question about um, branding it for the end user. Is it just going to be at the dealer level or also at the end user level? By default, the branding is for the dealer. However, on an individual basis, um, you know, I'm going through the customer uh, end user website. So this is what they see to control their system. You will have access to what we call a dealer website, 
where you actually set up the customer and get them ready to go. And that's also where you can log in and, and um, support the customer. But through that, um, uh, the dealer website, on an individual basis, you can also brand, the, uh, brand it for the customer too. So you have the option. By default, it's going to be your um, name and, and color scheme. But if you have a customer that you want to brand it particularly for them, you have the option to do that also. I clicked on the monitor section, which uh, the monitor section is designed to give uh, real-time activity and view what's been occurring, as well as controlling the system. So if we want to arm and disarm and things like that. What we're seeing um, right now, the, the latest event, was when we actually logged in. Uh, all the um, event information that comes from the control panels, whether it's trouble events or access events, arming, all that information gets stored as well as a full audit trail. So um, anytime a customer is logged in and making any changes, there's a full audit trail of that information. So you know what commands were sent, what um, changes were made. And they can have as many users as they need logged in simultaneously, all with different permissions. So a customer can set up additional users to be able to log in and see one location and maybe not another, or only be able to see this activity screen and maybe not be able to change users, fully customizable by your customer. There's a few screens where they can also integrate um, the live video and see live video in the same screens, and this is one of them. If, they have, uh, if you have cameras set up on their account, they would be able to click on that link and then, for instance, they can pull up a view of one of the cameras and this uh, window will come up in just a second here and they'd be able to see the video along with any access or alarm activity that's occurring too. And you can move these uh, windows around as you're watching the activity. You can see that on the site area column, there's two locations set up on this particular demo account. One that was called home and the other was called office. So even if the customer has multiple locations, when you log in, you don't have to choose which one you want to look at. The information is merged into the same screen. Mouse is messing around on me there. On the uh, alarm access page, uh, each area that's configured, uh, they can easily see the armed and disarmed status. And again, if you look at the first column, there's one area configured on the home uh, site and two areas configured on the office site. So even if you divide up uh, and partition multiple areas on the panel, the, the customer can see armed and disarmed status across those and then also be able to make uh, changes whether they want to arm the system or disarm the system very easily. They can actually arm and disarm multiple locations on the same screen. They were to choose like this arm there and maybe arm here and then they just hit send command. So um, the idea is a very friendly point and click style of management. There may be cases where your customers, you know, Maybe they're managing a system, maybe a multi-tenant or something like that, managing a system, and they've never even seen a keypad or know how the keypad works. With Connect One, they don't have to, they don't have to know. It's very simple point and click. On the zones page, each zone that uh, you've programmed into the Elk panel will come up, and they'll be able to see the status of that zone. Uh, we also have a temperature probe connected to this zone on the office panel. The temperature probes will be able to see uh, the current temperature. This one is showing us 76 degrees. So like I said, it also can be, uh, uh, you know, they can get low and high temperature alarms from that, and it can also be logged, which I'll show you uh, in just a minute here. If they need to bypass the zone remotely, they can easily bypass the zone. On the doors and output screen, each access door and output that you want your customer to have control over will appear on this screen. 
the access doors would be using like the M1 KAM module, which uh, would allow you to tie in a weekend card reader and a uh, door lock, and also any of the outputs uh, can also be controllable on here. The uh, you know, ELK has the capability of tying in Z-Wave devices. Uh, basically, th this uh, one I have highlighted here with my mouse, call it front door, and I just called it also in parentheses Z-Wave for reference. But even the Z-Wave electronic locks can be controlled uh, through this interface. And then they have options that can om open, unlock, or lock a uh, door. Open is just a momentary. It'll open up for five seconds and then lock again afterwards. And then if, if there's an output you want your customer to have control over, this one we just called control relay, but whatever is applicable, uh, momentary on or off are the options. There's also a screen to view all the cameras, like you saw in that first one. I'm just going to skip over that for right now because it looks similar. The HVAC tab will show any of the thermostats connected to the ELK panel. And once again, you'll see there's, there's five thermostats here, three from the office location, two from the home location. So it uh, doesn't matter they have more than one location. They can see them all. We actually have one true thermostat connected to the panel right now. It's called this first floor one. And you see um, it shows the temperature. Uh, the outside temperature is, is pulled from an Internet source. So you don't need to worry about actually connecting an outside temperature sensor. But um, the top outside temperature can appear here for a reference. It can control the modes and um, currents, cool, and heat set points easily for any of the thermostats. And then under lighting, um, any lights or appliances connected as lights on the control panel will show up and they can control them with an on or off to turn the lights on or off. Uh, this is what it looks like if they happen to have one of them set as a dimmer. They can dim a certain light to a percentage rather than just a full on or off. And then lastly, any task that you want your customer to, to be able to activate will appear here. And um, also any keypad F key that you want your customer to have control over, it can show up. I keep saying that you want your customer to have control over, and what that means is that on the dealer website that you'll have, um, have a login for when you set up the customer, you'll say which ones you want to show up. So um, this is, you know, we have the police panic showing up here, but, you know, in a practical purpose you wouldn't do that, um, but you can choose which ones you do want. And then also the status of the light on that F key will show up here, whether it's on, off, or blinking. And when they hit activate, it's like pushing the key on the keypad. Hey, Dave, so, there is a question oh, excuse sure. me, that says, is the connection real-time when you're controlling lights or locks or other things? Well, it's the um, information here is what we refer to as like an offline view, where when we're clicking between the different screens, we're not actually connecting to the control panel, but the control panel is feeding us information in real time. So anytime a light changes or uh, turns on or turns off or the thermostat change or anything like that, the screens will uh, reference the latest information because we receive it in real time. When they go to make a change, and I'll just show you basically what happens. Say I want to activate this particular task. I'll just choose activate and hit send commands. Um, anytime there's anything that could have a negative effect if you did it by accident, there'll be a prompt to make sure that's what you want to do. So I'll hit OK. And what happens is those commands go into this queue. Um, and what we've done is the, the idea is to make it simple and secure. And what that means is we, we're waiting for a next message from the control panel. And that way, you only need an outgoing connection to the internet. So right now, we're in the process of um, waiting for a connection. And the maximum time you'd have to wait is uh, 30 seconds. But when that happens, then the screen will update 
and for some reason we got an error there on that particular one. But when that happens, then that command is, is done in process. So the monitor section is used for viewing real-time information, um, like on the activity screen as new events occur. Uh, we can see what's going on, and then also controlling the system and viewing the current status. If they need to run a report to go back further in time and see what's happened a few months ago, then they would come to the reporting section. And the most common report is called the event activity report. And I click on that. Um, there'll be uh, some filter selections here about what they want to see, uh, first being the different event types. There's a lot of the different events that can be generated from the control panel with alarms or access events, as well as, like I mentioned before, the audit trail events with commands that might be sent out or modifications, or like I said, even anytime someone logs in or logs out, it all gets stored. I'm just going to select everything to show you what a, a report looks like. And then another powerful feature is being able to run a single report across multiple locations. So here we see there's the home location, the office location. I'm just going to select all locations. And we could filter out by a given user, but I'm just going to say any user to run a report and show you what one looks like. And when I hit um, report, I get the information, um, and you can see there's events from uh, the control panel. There's these user events, which are the audit trail. And you also see uh, an event that was generated that says email notification. Uh, we have what can be configured interaction rules, and I mentioned this a few minutes ago. But the, the rules can send out uh, emails or text messages either instantly or in a daily or weekly report. But this is an example of an instant email going out uh, based on the fact that this task command was uh, sent out. And you can see who the email was sent to. So there's a full trail of that as well if you need to look back and see you know, who was notified and when and things like that. But um, since I selected everything, you're viewing a report with all the information here. and um, but you know, for instance, we got two different locations here. If we need to find out where Perry was, you know, we don't have to run multiple reports to see where he was. Any report can be exported or also printed out. I mentioned earlier about the ability to log the temperature probes on an um, interval and then for regulatory reasons or things like that, they can approve temperatures were in a consistent range. So I'll run one uh, for this probe we have set up, and I'll run it for yesterday. What this happens, to, uh, this happens to be logged every, um, every hour. So every hour, we see in the list below here what that temperature was. And then above the list, they can get a graphical view and see uh, you know, graphically where the temperatures were for this particular device. And then also it shows a summary. These reports can also be exported and printed out as well. There's actually also the ability for the thermostats to be uh, logged for a historical report. If I select that first floor thermostat, anytime there's a change, the thermostat information can be logged. And then graphically, in, in the list view, at the given time it was sampled, um, they can get a reference of you know, the historical of the thermostat. What I'd like to do now is show you uh, what we call login profile. And I'm going to click on one of these that's already set up. I mentioned that your customer can have as many users logged in simultaneously as they need. And I also said with um, their own permissions and however the customer wants to set that up. This is how they would do that. They would set up a login profile and that profile can be given to a user 
And then when they log in, uh, these selections would say whether or not they're going to see particular sections. So um, they could say no permissions to activity. Maybe they can't see doors and outputs. So they could easily go down the line and, um, for instance, with users, maybe you say view only. And they can only see um, what users are in there, but they can't make any changes. So they can easily configure that information. And then below that, there's uh, two boxes which list out the sites and areas that they might be able to see. Um, the box on the right are ones they can see. So these particular people could see everything. But let's say um, your customer, uh, like this one, has a gate at their house that they want someone to have control over just so they can get up the drive or something like that. Um, I'm going to move all the other areas over on the left. So now this would be an example where um, they could give someone a login to control the gate, but they wouldn't be able to see the home um, area, which would be you know the rest of the house, and then they wouldn't be able to see the office location either. There's a few other things that, that we've um, added to the ELK panel that aren't available otherwise. Um, one being a virtual anti-passback, where basically um, violations can be generated if someone doesn't wipe out properly if you have entry and exit readers into different areas. Um, and it uh, doesn't deny anybody. It's like a soft anti-passback. But the customer can then receive a report and, uh, uh, and look at the, the violations to, to handle it with the employees. Let me just jump in for a minute, Dan. One of the, one of the things that we have seen that, that's uh, important to a lot of commercial customers when Dan was mentioning in and out readers, is smoking doors. Um, we've done quite a few, and other dealers around the country also have done quite a few doors with readers on both sides to give reports of how long people are out having a cigarette. Uh, and that report then is looked at managed by management, and they can see Bob, for instance, uh, you know, it takes him uh, half an hour or 45 minutes to, fi to finish his cigarette. Uh, and then they look at how, how long is that person in a uh, productive area making money for the company and how often is that person out having a cigarette. Uh, and you'd be surprised how when people know that this being, uh, when, when employees know that that's being watched, uh, you know, they're out and the cigarette only takes them, you know, five to ten minutes. So that's that's a real powerful tool, and, and uh, it, it's a lot of a lot of companies have been requesting that. So there, there's a that's a that's a nice ROI to uh, uh, present to a commercial customer. I mentioned before about being able to send a lockdown command down to the control panel. Uh, this selection here in the profile would say um, which users also get deactivated when that lockdown is sent. So basically, um, the general population would not be able to, or um, isn't presented into a, a hazardous or a security related uh, event. They're, they're locked out from the system as well. There's a couple other quick things they can set up, like the ability to restrict someone's login to connect one based on a schedule. So maybe they only want to give someone um, a login during working hours. They can do that. Um, they can restrict system activity on a schedule. So, um, you know, the, with the ELK panel, they might be able to be granted access into the building 24 hours a day. But maybe the customer wants to set up a schedule where anytime outside of 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., the people can get in, but I want to get an alert that says that someone just entered outside of hours. So they could easily set that up. And then lastly, they can also restrict. OK, go ahead. There was a question about login permissions as to whether it's the M1 user or is it for the cloud user? Uh, well, it's, as far as Connect One goes, it's a combination of both. There's a combination of this login profile as far as which sites they're going to see when they log in, um, which different sections, whether you see monitor, reporting, or those. And then the code that they have would say whether or not they can arm or disarm or whether or not they could change other codes. So it's kind of a combination of both. What we're seeing here is not editing the code in the M1, 
I'll show you that in just a sec, uh, second. Uh, lastly here, um, they would also have the ability to restrict logins to connect one based on the network they're logging in from. So maybe they want to restrict someone to only be able to log in from the company network and not from home. They could configure that as well. And they can have as many of these login profiles as they need uh, for their users. For a user, um, we'll click on like Bob here. This is what a user looks like in the uh, system. They can upload an image of the user, and then anytime an event is generated, uh, that person's image will pop up. Uh, they can add in their contact information, which would be email or text messaging addresses to be used in our interaction rules, where they can get notification. And then their codes are listed. So like I said before, um, you know, well, this is how they would edit a code. And um, they can put in all the information about the code, a facility code. If it uh, happens to be an access card, they can enter that here, and the external number if it's different. Codes are always hidden, but if they have permissions, they'll be able to toggle to see the code, make sure they entered it correctly. And then the permissions about that code, which areas is it good for, can they arm or disarm, and uh, things like that. So all the different permissions on the code they can adjust and set. Now what I'd like to do real quickly is show you how easily it is to add a new user. Hey Dan, we did have a question about um, smartphone experience and saying is, is this exactly what they would see using a smartphone? It can be. It's the, the, this is the full version. Um, so it's designed for a, a PC. However though, it's also designed to be cross compatible with the smartphones too. So they could log in and see this full interface and do everything exactly the way you're seeing it now from their smartphone. They just have to zoom in and out in order to you know, read everything properly. However, and then we have the mobile version, and the mobile version is uh, you can see and do everything that I showed you in the monitor section. So if you need to go beyond the monitor section of viewing recent activity and uh, controlling the status, and you need to change a user, then you would switch over to the full version. Um, but it's very easy to add a new user. I just click on create a new user and let's say we're going to type in a new person. Let's we'll call him Tom. Um, we could give them their login profile and a username and password to be able to log in. I'm just going to set up a, a, a general employee that doesn't have a login, but maybe they're going to have an access card. So I'll choose no authority. And then once I save it, it comes to the user screen where I can add in their access card. So I'm going to hit add. And it knows I have two different locations, so I select the first one I want to add it to. I'll choose the office one. And then I can add in their number, whatever it happens to be. And um, Let's say the facility code's 100, and I'll make this a WGAN code. And then it's good for the office area, and maybe they can just do door access. They can't get in the warehouse. And then when I save that, it'll recognize that there's another system that I could also add that to, and I could just check it off and hit continue. And now I've added Tom's code to both locations without having to type it in more than once. So it saves on errors when that can occur and it makes it you know, quick. If I want to remove this user, it's very easy to do that as well. I can just click delete user and again it's going to say, are you sure that's what you want to do? Yes it is. And then it will also ask, um, you know, there's codes too, want to delete those also and I'll hit yes. So a couple clicks and I was able to remove Tom just as quick as I added him. Just uh, two other quick things I wanted to mention about the live demonstration. Uh, under scheduling, I mentioned earlier about how the customer can set up their own uh, thermostat setback schedules, and this is what it would look like for them to do it, where they have a standard mode heat and cool set point, and then when the system gets armed, 
um, or based on a time, it can go over to the alternate schedule. And then uh, depending on the mode of arming of the system, they can have a different heat and cool set point. So if it goes to the alternate schedule because the system changed to the stay mode, then they can have a heat and cool point. Then they arm it at night to go to sleep. They can have a different heat and cool point or likewise with away and vacation mode. So they can easily configure this and change it as they need it without, uh, you know, without you having to change anything for them. And then lastly, um, I talked about these interaction rules where they can get notification and send out, you know, e uh, events or reports. We also have these supervision rules. Um, and for instance, this one here, uh, it's doing a check to make sure areas are armed by a certain time. So this would be like a late to close type of uh, check. And if it's not armed by 5.30, Monday through Friday, an event is generated stating as such, and the customer could get notified. And there's other options as well. Uh, make sure uh, areas are disarmed by a certain time, so that would be like a late to open. And they can, set, they can easily set up and tailor and customize these however they see fit. I'm going to now switch back over to our slides. One of the things I wanted to mention uh, before I get into this is there's, we've, you know, we've been doing this for quite some time. Our typical turnover of uh, Connect One to an end user is uh, um, with some automation and maybe some access is anywhere between a half an hour and 45 minutes. So it's not real time consuming. It's very intuitive. It seems to be the, uh, the theme that we hear most often from dealers and end users is how intuitive it is. And the, the, uh, we get a few questions afterwards during you know, the first week after the installation. They may call us a couple times and have some questions, but that's about it. We've got systems that uh, um, are being operated like in school districts by head of maintenance and they've been doing it for years and we never even hear from them. So um, it's, uh, it, it, we have experience and know that this is, this is pretty easy for the end user to operate. Uh, getting started with uh, Connect One, we give you a free evaluation account. It's an account that you have as long as you're on board with us as far as a dealer and you can do whatever you want. A lot of the dealers, they put their office or their personal home onto Connect One or they'll, they'll put a control panel on a test bench and use that for their sales staff to uh, demonstrate the system. Uh, we talked about this before, no upfront costs or minimum account commitments, uh, no equipment to purchase or, or support. It's all uh, the, um, the ELF product, uh, so there's no additional equipment that you're, you're going to need. Uh, our servers are located in a secure site. We're in the security business. We know what it's like. Uh, so we're very uh, cognizant of uh, you know, how secure we need to be. Uh, the uh, data is protected by a secure, reliable operating system and firewall and data storage with automatic uh, failover, redundancy, and off-site backup. Um, the brochures, uh, there's no brochures or contracts to design. We provide all that for you. We even give you a sample contract that you can customize to use to have signed by your your customers because uh, it's a different type of service. Software as a service is unique and that uh, requires a unique uh, contract also. So I guess this, um, at this point right now, if we have any additional questions, we'd like to field those. Okay, guys, we've had several questions and you may just want to address the question of are you a central station or do you replace a central station? Well, that's a good question. No, we are not a central station. In fact, uh, uh, StanGuard does not operate a central station. We uh, use a third-party central station. Uh, we, like Dan mentioned earlier, we do not come in between you, so like some other products where the, uh, the alarm location then reports to this other service and that other service then transmits the data to the central station. We don't come and uh, we're not in between that. We think that's wrong. We've had some uh, experience with delays in the communications when going through a, a 
a, uh, a service that uh, it is the middleman. So uh, we don't do that. No, we are not a central station, uh, and um, it's not a business that we want to be in at this time. So it's, de it's designed for the customer to be able to see and control their system, but it would not replace police response by a you know a, a UL listed central so the station. So basically, the dealer is using their their present central station. It does not uh, it doesn't interfere with the central station any uh, any dealer is presently using. Okay, guys, we realize we're, we're at our hour time limit, so we're not going to keep you. We're just going to answer one more question, and it is, if a change is made at the location outside of Connect One, and then a conflicting change is made on Connect One, how is it resolved? Well, whoever made the last change would, uh, would, would, be the, would, would stick there. So um, it... it the idea is that if, if you're making changes through um, the ELK software, I, I, I'm guessing that the question is related to codes. I mean, if, if there were changes like the light was turned on or something like that, that or you know, an area was armed, that information gets sent out and Connect One would know about it already. The only thing that there'd be any conflict in uh, would be a code change um, that the customer might do, but. The, the idea is to, um, to have the customer be in the habit of making changes through Connect One. Once they have Connect One, um, there wouldn't be any reason to be you know, standing at the keypad anymore to make a code change. The other thing I was thinking of when I was talking here is um, maybe they could be referring to if there's uh, zone changes or things like that that um, the installer changes. And if that happens, then all you have to do is through the dealer website, you log in and you upload that change into Connect One, and then the, the customer would be able to see that new information. Okay, guys, we thank you so much for joining us today. We thank Dan and Mike. We thank Amy. And we um, want to let you know that we will be sending a link to the recorded webinar if you uh, need to view it again. And we will also be following up if there are questions that we weren't able to get to. So thanks, Dan and Mike. Thanks, Amy. And hope you all have a great weekend. Okay. Take care.